Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 7.2 Geometric Sequences. So I'm going to do some definitions before we start. A uh, sequence is an ordered list of numbers, so it does have to have some sort of rule that defines it, and it can't just be random. A term is a number in that sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a type of sequence that has a common difference between any pair of consecutive terms, meaning that if I had something like 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so forth, that uh, any of these, when I subtract the bigger one minus, or the second one minus the first one, I'll get the same number. So 5 minus 2 is 3, 8 minus 5 is 3, 11 minus 8, 3, 14 minus 11, 3, so they're all the same. In fact, they have the same first differences, if you like to think of it that way. So this one would be called t sub 1, this one's t sub 2, this one t3, t4, t5, and so forth. Okay? So, um, we could define that using a general term. The general term is a formula to find the nth term of the sequence called t sub n. So t sub n in this case, we're going to start with 2 and we're going to add uh, a multiple of 3, right? So it's going to be plus 3 times n minus 1. And the reason I need the minus 1 is because this is t sub 1, so I want to make sure I'm not adding 3 yet. So I have to do 1 minus 1, which is 0. If I want to do the recursive formula, which only works for recursive sequences, and every arithmetic sequence is a recursive sequence, uh, it's one where one or more term is given and the successive terms are determined by the previous term. So I can give the first term, which is t sub 1, as 2, and then every other term I can define if I know the previous term. So knowing 14, I could find the next one. It's going to be 14 plus 3, so that's 17. So t sub n is t sub n minus 1 plus 3 right? And that's how you find the recursive formula. So we could define these sequences in either of these ways, and uh, this is true for geometric sequences as well. A geometric sequence has a common ratio, so it's more like an exponential. So where arithmetic is adding and subtracting, common ratio means that we're multiplying and dividing for a geometric sequence. So we have a common ratio between any pair of consecutive terms. And we can find the general term or the recursive formula for the geometric sequence as well. So we're going to do that in example A. Let's dive right in. Determine a formula that defines the geometric sequence 3, 12, 48. So we can see that when we divide, this is going to be 12 divided by 3 is 4, 48 divided by 12 is 4, so the common difference is 4. And our first term is 3, so if we want to use the recursive formula, t sub 1 is equal to 3, and every other term is um, 4 times the previous term, so 4 times t sub n minus 1. So that's the recursive formula. To find the general term, t sub n is equal to, we'll start with the 3, and we want to do uh, powers of 4, because we want to multiply by 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So it's going to be 4 to the n minus 1. Again, minus 1 because t, uh, 3 is t1, so we don't want to have uh, 1, we don't want to have 3 times 4, we want to have 3 times 0, or sorry, 3 times 1. So 4 to the 1 minus 1 is 4 to the 0, which is 1. Okay? And that's how that works. So now we can do the general case. Determine a formula that defines the geometric sequen sequence with t sub 1 equals a, and that has a common difference of r. So if I want to do that in the recursive formula, t sub 1 will be equal to a. We already know that. And every other one will be the previous one times r. So r times t sub n minus 1. And that's the recursive formula. To find the general form, we're going to start with a and multiply by powers of r, so r to the n minus 1. So these are the two formulas for the geometric sequence, and they're the general form. So we'd always say that the first one will be a, and then the ratios will be r. Okay, and these are something that you could memorize if you like, um, but they're, they're pretty easy to derive. Okay, so let's try some more questions. We're going to use those general forms to do these. How many terms are in the sequence? Uh, this giant number, this giant number, all the way down to 11. And uh, so in order to do that, actually this should say that it is a geometric sequence because uh, it could be arithmetic or it could even be some random sequence that has some sort of pattern that is not geometric nor arithmetic. Um, so, in order to do this, I need to find the first ratio. Um, so, 17, 5, 3, 7, 5, 5, 3, over 
0.52612659 is going to end up being our R, our ratio. And if you do this on your calculator, you'll find this actually equals one third. Um, so that's convenient. And we actually also know that A is equal to 5261259. Um, so now I just have my T sub n, and my T sub n is 11, and I'm going to use that to find my n. So T sub n is equal to a r to the n minus 1, and I know T sub n is 11, and I know a is 52612659, and that r is 1 third to the n minus 1. So we would just solve this. It's an exponential uh, equation and we can solve it like we've been solving them before. Uh, we did them a while back. So 11 divided by 52612659 ends up being 1 over 4782969. You just use your calculator for that. And this is equal to 1 third to the n minus 1. And because these are both 1 over, I can actually just flip it over. So I'm going to get 4782 2969 is equal to 3 to the n minus 1. And now we could solve it. You can use guess and check, of course, but uh, we did teach you how to do logs. So if you like, you can use logs instead. It's just easier to type into your calculator. So this will be log base 3 of 4782969 is equal to n minus 1. Type that into your calculator. Uh, and if you don't have this little base, of course, you can do log 4782969 divided by log 3, and that will give you a number, which is 14. So 14 is equal to n minus 1, so n is equal to 15. There are 15 terms in this sequence. Okay, so the next one is really similar to it. We're going to determine the 13th term of a geometric sequence if the second term is 18 and the fifth term is 144. So this is a little bit harder because uh, we don't have the first term, so we can't just plug it in. But um, it's still not that bad, don't worry. So we're going to do, we know that t sub 2 is equal to a r to the 1. And we also know that t sub 5 is equal to a r to the 4. So this is equal to 18, and this is equal to 144. And we're going to, um, we're going to do an elimination here, but we can't sub just subtract it. It's not going to work out. We're actually going to divide them. So we're going to do t sub, t uh, sorry, t sub 5 divided by t sub 2. So that gives us a to the R, a times r to the 4 over a r is equal to uh, 144 over 18. Um, and if we divide this, then we'll get r cubed is equal to 8. 144 divided by 18 is 8. You just use your calculator for that. And hopefully you recognize this uh, 8 as 2 cubed, so r is actually equal to 2. Or, of course, you could do r uh, equals 8 to the 1 third and type it into your calculator. That's how we reverse the um, exponents. So r is equal to 2. That's convenient. And we could find a, but I don't really want to because I could do it without it. So in order to find the 13th term, I know that t sub 13 is going to be a r to the 12. Um, or in other words, this is a r times r to the 11. And I know what a r is, that's 18. And I know r, that's 2. So the whole thing ends up being, uh, typing it into our calculators, 3, 6, 8, 6, 4. And that is the 13th term. Done. OK, so I think we have one more question for you. And actually, I'm not going to solve this question for you. I'm just going to let you think about it on your own. So uh, why don't you try this question? And I will take it up in class. Example E, two groups of kangaroos meet on a narrow mountain trail. There are the same number going in each direction. Their challenge is to swap places using the following rules. Number one, only one kangaroo can move at a time. A move is a jump o over or a hop. Uh, rule two, kangaroos can hop one space forward, but never backward, to an empty space. And a kangaroo can only jump over one oncom un oncoming kangaroo at a time, must land on an empty space. Only oncoming kangaroos can be jumped. So 
if you had two groups of kangaroos and there were 100 kangaroos on each side, what is the least number of moves required to swap them? And what if there are x kangaroos on each side? How would you do that? So um, just a hint, it is in the geometric sequence section. And uh, hopefully you will think about that and answer it and then bring it to class. And we'll go over it together. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I will see you soon. Bye.